Okay guys, so we've jumped into Lightroom and first I'm just gonna give you guys some tips to uh, create some astrophotography. So, the very first tip is to use a wide angle lens with a low aperture. So this means that it has a low f-stop, uh, anywhere between like 1.2 to 2.8 would be ideal. You can get some awesome shots with a with an aperture of an f-stop of four. Um, this was actually shot with, with an f-stop of four with three photos that have been merged all into one. So the, the second tip I want to give you guys is to keep the horizon line in the shot. So if you just have a photo just plainly of stars with no mountains or perspective of people, uh, you can just make the, uh, the actual photo quite confusing. So just make sure you have something or a subject in the, uh, in the actual photo just to give it some dynamics and some variety. Thirdly, you have to try to keep your ISO under 3200 or below. Anything above 3200 ISO will make your, your photo uh, very grainy and it will have a lot of noise uh, which just looks very unprofessional. And tip number four is to use a 500 rule for your shutter speed. So when deciding how long to open up the shutter, if you take 500 divided by the focal length that you're shooting, this will give you the maximum period of time before uh, the, the star trails will be in your photo. So those are the four tips, just make sure you use them and you'll create some awesome astrophotography. All right, now let's jump into it. So I've got the photo here. Uh, this is a photo of the Milky Way. As I said, it's three photos that have been merged into one to give it a bit more of contrast and variety. Um, so the very first thing we are going to do is just make the image pop. So I'm just going to uh, just bring this slider across just so you guys can see it a little bit more. Cool, so first thing we're gonna do is I'm just going to give it a little bit of contrast and just bring the blues down just very so slightly. I'm also going to uh, bring the greens down just to give it that little bit of a uh, of an aurora sort of look. Um, it's just more of a personal preference that I really like to do and just uh, makes it very interesting. The next thing I'm going to do is I am just going to bring the highlights down very so slightly and increase the shadows up. With the whites I'm also going to bring that up a little bit and drop the blacks. With, uh, with the clarity, I'm just going to bring that up as well. And I'm just going to bring the vibrance down ever so slightly and just increase the saturation a little bit as well. So as you can already see, it's already starting to pop a little bit. So the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the, uh, the tones curve. And what I'm going to do is just do your normal S curve and I'm just going to darken the blacks and increase the highlights. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down to sharpening. Um, I'm just going to increase the sharpening amount just ever so slightly and what I'm going to do with the masking is I'm going to hold alt and then I'm going to increase it and you'll get this sort of look. What this is doing is it's, uh, is it's sharpening only the highlights in the photo so, and it's keeping all the, uh, all the shadows not even touched. So I quite like the look of that so I'm just going to leave it at that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the brush tool, click on brush, make sure everything is on default. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to decrease the shadows and just, uh, I'll just make the size a little bit smaller. I'm going to increase the flow a fair point. I'm then going to detick the select shadow mask overlay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the darker areas and this just darkens them to add a little bit more contrast into the photo. Um, it's a very, very subtle minor thing. You can't actually see too much of it, but there we go, I've just done that. And I'm gonna come back up here, and I'm gonna click on mask again, and I'm just gonna make the shadows back to zero. I'm gonna come down here, bring the, the flow down, click on mask overlay, just increase the brush tool a little bit. I'm just gonna paint over the Milky Way. Now, as you can see, that's the majority of it's been painted. If you do want to take a little bit off that you have done, just press Alt, and that will just mask around it just to just to make it a little bit more perfect. Let's bring it up here a little bit more. And again, just gonna move that a little bit around. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna um, increase it accordingly. So I'm just gonna increase the exposure ever so slightly, as well as the, uh, the contrast. The highlights can be brought up and the shadows can be brought down. And I'm just gonna increase the clarity as well. Now a trick here is also with this color box, if you click on the color box, it gives you a bunch of selection tools. I like to click down here just to the uh, to the, the pinks or 
You can actually sort of play around with it and pick. I like to come with, with the reds, just adds a little bit of color into the photo. And if you just click done, uh, this will pretty much show you that it's just made your image and uh, just, just pop and it's also made the Milky Way itself just stand out. So as you can see from the before and after, obviously I've got that uh, that teal sort of look in there. Um, that's just something that I, I like, um, it's just something that, that I do anyway. Um, so as you can see, that's just edited the highlights. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to come over here to our hues, make sure the hue is selected. And I'm just going to bring these blues down just to give that more of a teal look. Um, again, that's a personal preference. I quite like it. Um, I know that some people don't, but as I said, you can play around with these colors. So I've just played around with that ever so slightly just to make it pop a little bit. As you can see, here's the, uh, the wee purples and magentas just slightly ever popping out. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here to noise. We're going to bring up the luminescence and that will just make your noise a little bit less re uh, reduced as you can see in here. So lastly I'm just going to come down uh, to, actually you know, one more thing I'm going to do just here is I'm going to come down to, where is it? It is under effects, uh, to the vignetting and I'm just going to make the the vignetting about negative five, negative six. It just darkens um, each corner just to uh, make the center of focus be the Milky Way itself. Lastly, I'm just going to get a graduated filter. I'm just gonna hold shift and bring this up just to make sure it is fully even. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to increase the exposure. We can increase it a fair bit, as well as the shadows and the contrast. Um, I don't want too much shadows in it because I don't want it to be the main center of focus um, and the highlights I'm just going to decrease as well as the saturation because we want the main focus to be on the Milky Way. So again I'm just going to bring up the sharpness and reduce that noise. And that's pretty much all you have to do just to make your image pop and stand out. So if I click on L that shows it there um, and it's pretty much stood out really really well. There we have it there. As you can see, the before photo, uh, that was just the normal photo taken from camera, three photos merged all into one. This is, this is how you get it to stand out. Obviously, if you don't like the blue and, uh, and teal look, you can change it so you can make it uh, purple or magenta, uh, but this is just the look that I like myself and it's just uh, something that, that I've gone with. So there we have it there, that is how you create some awesome photos with astrophotography and that is how you edit them to make them really stand out. It's really quick, it's really fast and you guys should really get out there and start doing it. Thanks for watching, see you guys next time.